name is Marcelo Soares and I'm here today to talk about memory over commitment on vSphere environments. Uh, first of all, we'll explain how memory management works on operational systems like Linux and Windows, and then how the memory management works on the vSphere environments, and how ESX manage the virtual machine memory to maximize the memory usage. Okay, So, first of all, uh, the operational systems have each, each operational system has its own uh, memory management uh, uh, software or algorithm uh, where the operational system know what pages on memory are mo more important than the others. So uh, when a program running inside a Windows machine or inside a Linux machine needs memory, the operational system checks for the, for, uh, the memory it use, does that matter if it's virtual or physical, and allocates this program uh, the proper amount of memory that the program needs to work. Okay, each program have uh, its priority. Uh, some programs are more important than the others, and uh, sometimes it will happen that uh, a program will not be running on uh, memory, and it can be swapped to disk or to uh, whatever uh, the operational system have to swap. Uh, pages that are on memory that are not uh, needed anymore or it's not needed often or uh, simply because the operational system is running out of memory and needs to something that's running on memory okay so um, each page of memory have its uh, like uh, uh, its importance each operational system works differently on managing this depending on the application, some kind of memory scaling are better than the others, but we will not discuss this here, okay, because um, uh, each operational system uh, will behave its, uh, uh, like uh, it's configured, and we, uh, the vSphere environment does not, uh, does not matter about how the operational system is managing, is managing the, the memory or not, okay. So in the vSphere environments, we have um, the, uh, we have many uh, memory over commitment mechanisms. Okay, uh, for example, if we have an ESX server with 32 gigs of RAM, uh, this ESX server will support that you have um, uh, on all your virtual machine residing inside this ESX server more memory configured on the virtual machines than the ESX server really have physically. Okay, so if you have 32 gigs of RAM, you can have, for example, 64 VMs with one gig of RAM each, and you have 64 gigs of virtual RAM, and, and this will work how the virtual machines will power on, and the ESX server will use what we call of memory over commitment mechanisms to, uh, to make all these virtual machines run on the same physical memory. Okay, so the first thing that um, the, the ESX server do to uh, overcommit the memory is what we call TPS or transparent page sharing. Okay, so what's transparent page sharing? Well, you can imagine this as your physical memory block is like 1k block or whatever the operational system is is configured to work and this is physical and this is our virtual memory so the virtual memory is what the virtual machine sees okay for example this represents the one gig uh, memory for one of our 64 machines of my example that I provide uh, before and the physical memory have 32 gigs, okay? So each block on this, um, on this virtual machine will point to one block on the physical memory. So, for example, this block points here, this block points here, and this block points here, and all, all the other blocks that are, that is, are not uh, use it on the virtual machine, of course, are not used on the physical memory also. 
So the information residing on each of these blocks are mapped to the physical memory, okay? But we can have more than one virtual machine. For example, I have here the virtual machine one, virtual machine two, and this virtual machine have its own amount of memory, it's like one gig also. And uh, this virtual machine, we also have mappings to the physical memory. Okay, for example, here. And what happens, uh, what's, what's this mechanism that's tra transparent to pay share? Sometimes you have uh, two virtual machines running with the same operational system, for example, two Windows 2008 machines. Uh, many of the pages needed for these both these virtual machines uh, to run, to boot, for example, for the Windows to boot, are the same. You know, they, are, they both are the same software running, and it's most likely that both virtual machines will have the same information on the pages or some of the pages uh, identical between each other. For example, this first page used for this virtual machine to boot is, is identical to this first page of the second machine used to boot. So what vSphere does is when it, when it can uh, check that both pages of two different virtual machines or more than two different virtual machines are exactly the same, the ESX does not use a new uh, page on the physical memory. It simply points that identical page to the page that is already being used by the, the other virtual machine. So we are having page sharing between the virtual machines and we are saving space on the physical memory of the ESX server, okay? So this will make, it, this is the first mechanism that ESX will use to make all the 64 gigs fit on 32 gigs. Obviously only this is not enough to have uh, this kind of overcommitment. So there are more mechanisms that the ESX, that the ESX use to um, to store more um, more virtual memory than the physical memory to read through the half. So the second mechanism that we have, it's the uh, however it's here, so we have more space. It's memory compression. Compression, okay? So what the memory compression does? It's like a zip, uh, when, when you have a file and you want to compress it, you will zip this file. Okay, just right click and zip, the file will have uh, less space than the original amount of, of space it used before. So with memory compression it happens the same thing. When the ESX server uh, checks for two pages of memory, when it, it, it's, it's all the time checking this, when it checks with two pages that can, f can be zipped and fit in one single page, it does this. So it will zip this page and zip this page and will unify both pages in one single page. So when an operational system needs this page, to uh, need to read this page, and the first thing the ESX needs to do is to uncompress in memory, obviously, and then provide the uncompressed page to the, to the virtual machine. This is most uh, used where on a not commonly used pages. So if you have many uh, one page that is read by many virtual machines or it's, it's read all the time, the ESX server will not be will not be doing this uh, with this kind of page. So uh, it only does with pages that are not used often. Uh, it's uh, it takes it it has some penalty on on the, on the read time on in the write time. Also, if you need to change one page that is compressed, you need to uncompress and and reallocate both pages and then write on the page. So the write operation is, is more penalized uh, than the read operation, but both operations are, uh, have this penalty in the read time, okay? Well, the second, uh, the third uh, mechanism that is used for memory overcommitment is uh, the ballooning. I consider the ballooning the most uh, intelligent uh, memory overcommitment mechanism, and, and of it's it's more it's the more used memory overcommitment uh, mechanism when you 
you will be using the vSphere environment, okay? What the ballooning does? Well, each operational system has its own swapping mechanism. So when a virtual machine that has one gig of memory needs more than one gig of memory, uh, what the operational system will do? The operational system will take the, more, the, the less used page or the not, the not so important page and will write this page on disk. Okay, so this will free memory for the operational system to load new programs and when this page that is on disk is needed, uh, the operational system have two choices to make the program that is needing the space to read directly on disk. This will be extremely slow and will make the performance of this program, of this process to slow down or make this, the, the process wait and then write this page on, me on the physical memory and write some other page on the disk to free memory for this process, okay? So the operational system does one thing or the other. Both things will have uh, some, some time of penalty, but uh, charging based on memory will make things faster. And with ballooning, what happens? The SX server, uh, when you install a virtual machine, you need to install a program named VMware Tools, okay? VMware Tools, each operational system have its own version of VMware Tools. There is VMware Tools for Linux, for Windows, all the versions, and for Solaris, and for uh, in many flavors of Linux. So when you install virtual machine, it's uh, like a must-have uh, the VMware Tools uh, package on this operational system. The, the VMware Tools install a module we call VMMCTL, okay? The VMMCTL is the ballooning mechanism. This is a process that is all the time running and uh, by default is not using any, uh, uh, any amount of memory, okay? But if the ESX needs, mem needs to free memory and it already did, it did the transparent page sharing and already did the memory compression and does not have from, uh, from where take more physical memory, the ESX server send a sign up to this process inside of all virtual machines saying, look, I need more memory, so you, this process needs to increase its uh, memory usage. So for example, VMM Santel is using zero bytes, okay, on the physical memory. When, the, when it receives a sign of from the ESX server saying the ESX needs more memory, the VMM CTL says to the operational system it will use 100 max. Okay, it needs 100 max and urgently needs it. The operational system will uh, evaluate this request from this process. This process is high priority on the operational system, so it most likely will have this 100 max assigned to it on the physical on the on, on the physical memory of the operational system. And another process that is not so important as this one or the other ones that are running will be swapped on the virtual machine swap. Okay, so this 100 max will not be uh, will we use it as pages on the on the physical memory of the ESX server. Okay, so uh, this 100 max will be simulated and will not be physically mapped. So the ESX server will earn 100 max of from this virtual machine to provide to another virtual machine or whatever. And this program will be using this 100 max until the SX server send another sign of, well, I don't need this memory anymore, or it can even send a sign, I need more 100 max from, from, from this virtual machine. Sometimes you find virtual machines with 50% of usage of ballooning memory, and you see inside the operational system that VMM, VMMCTL is using, on our one gig example, it's using 500 max. And uh, so uh, don't be scared when you see this process using uh, much memory, it's just the overcommitment of the SX server working, okay? And um, obviously, if this happens, many programs that should be running on the physical virtual machine memory will be running on swap. This will make some things slower than normal. Okay, so ballooning, it's okay to have more memory on the SX server. 
but it's not okay for VMware uh, virtual machine performance. This will make things slower, just for have things clearer. Uh, because when uh, the operational system needs to run something that is on its own swap, uh, or it will run a swap, or it, it will try to allocate some physical memory, and this process will not release the 100 max it's using. Okay, oh, obviously the operational system can be configured to load the priority of this process, but this is a very ma manual procedure and obviously there is the need to have an operational system administrator to perform an operation like that, okay? And the last uh, and more usual, usual resources, resource that the SF server have to free memory is the swap. The VM swap, okay? When you power on a virtual machine with one gig of memory, by default, you have um, a file created uh, with the virtual machine, so where the virtual machine is stored, where the VMX and VMDK are stored, you have a file created with the VM name dot VSWB, okay? So this file will have one gig on disk, and this is the virtual machine swap file, okay? so. The vir this file will not, will not be used by default when the virtual machine power on. And, uh, but if the SX server cannot perform the transparent page sharing, it cannot, uh, cannot have earn more memory with the transparent page sharing, neither with the memory compression and neither with the, the, the ballooning. What the SX server will do if it does not have more physical memory to store this virtual machine, uh, the SX will take all the pages that were on the physical memory or some pages and we will store on this file. Okay, so uh, the operational system will think that uh, it is reading pages from physical memory when uh, in fact we'll be reading pages from this file on disk, okay, which is much slower than physical memory. So when you have situations uh, where the SX need to use this mechanism, you is you are already low in free memory, very low in free memory, very high on virtual memory usage. So it most likely, in our sample, you have 64 virtual machines with one gig and only 32 gigs, and now 64 virtual machines are powered on and using full memory, uh, like SQL servers or web servers or whatever. Uh, or few virtual machines using Excel spreadsheets, doc documents, or anything. And uh, having this kind of situation will make everything really slow, slower than with ballooning. With ballooning, the operational system knows that a page that needs to be read are on disk, on, on its own swap. With virtual machine swap, the operational system thinks that the page is on physical memory and will try to access it as a physical memory, and the page will take much longer to come back to the operational system and this will make the response times very 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 high so uh, you must take care about this uh, watch the numbers on, on the virtual machine resource allocation page uh, to check where are uh, where are the memory usage so you can see counters for all the, the, the procedures that I told here and check for the SX server, uh, also resource allocation. You can check if the SX server is ballooning too much, is swapping too much, and uh, so you will be able to check the health of your virtual environment just checking about these numbers. Okay, hope this helps. Thank you.